What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Check this out. This is a really cool classic rifle made by Bear Creek Arsenal out of Sanford, North Carolina, United States of America. If you're in the military in the late 80s, the 1990s, even the uh, early 2000s, there's a good chance you probably qualified on a rifle that looked just like this. Uh, this is obviously a civilian variant made by Bear Creek Arsenal. Semi-automatic, chambered in 223 wild, 20 inch barrel, 1 and 8 twist, 12 inch handguards, rifle length gas system, M4 feed ramps, solid buttstock, it's got a Picatinny rail on top, detachable carry handle, iron sights, old school, but very, very cool. So what this video is going to be about is just an initial inspection of this rifle before I go shoot it at the range. I don't recommend ever just taking a gun right out of the box and go straight to the range. You got to inspect it and also clean it and oil it because it is a machine. So uh, let's go ahead and take a close look at this rifle. It comes with a hard case. Um, that's just kind of nice that it comes in a hard case. I've bought more expensive rifles that came in cardboard boxes. So they give you a nice little carrying case. That's nice. Pat it on both sides, and this is exactly what you get uh, when you order this thing. It comes with a Tapco polymer 30 round magazine. That's not bad, Tapco, that's a pretty good decent quality magazine. I've had no problems with my Tapcos. Uh, mine came with a Bear Peak Arsenal patch. Had some test fire casings in here, looks like it has three of them. Now let's look at this thing from muzzle to butt and inside and out. It's got the uh, A2 birdcage flash hider and uh, the difference between an A2 and an A1 is it has that solid piece on the bottom. There's no vents. So what that does is keeps the uh, dust signature down when you're shooting in the prone position. Uh, there'll still be some dust kicked up if you've ever shot one of these things, but it, it should reduce it for the most part. By the way, the barrel is made out of 4150 chromoly vanadium gun barrel quality steel. So that's always nice to know. It says 0.223 wild, which means that it's chambered in 223 wild, meaning that it can set 5.56223, which is nice. Uh, they don't recommend shooting um, steel case out of these guns, uh, but it'll shoot everything else. And then it says 1 and 8 twist, which means uh, for every 8 inches, the projectile will spin one rotation. And basically what that means is for you guys out there who don't know, uh, one in eight twists is like your reloader's twist rate, for which I've heard some people say. And uh, it just allows you to shoot a wide variety of bullet weights from the lightweight stuff, you know, 55 grain all the way up to the, uh, the grains up into the 70s. And then it's stamped right there, USA. That's nice. I mean, that's just a cool feature to see. The barrel itself is parkerized. Um, something to note right away though, it does not have chrome lining at the time that uh, I'm making this video. Um, I've heard that they're talking about doing uh, some type of lining in the future maybe. I don't know if they're going to do chrome lined barrels or melanite or whatever. But at the moment there's no chrome lining. And that's to be expected. I mean it is a budget rifle of $594. Just a minor negative for some people who want chrome lining. Um, keep your rifle clean and you don't really need chrome lining. HK doesn't chrome line their barrels. And I'm not going to get into the whole debate, but chrome lining uh, does make your barrel more durable, but it also can degrade your accuracy because it is a lining on top of your, your lands and grooves. So anyway, not a big deal, especially for, for 594 bucks. Who cares? It does have an A-frame style front sight post and gas block assembly, which is very durable. You could bang the crap out of this thing and it's not going to break, not like a flip up sight. It's got a bayonet lug, which is nice for the guys that need a pig sticker. You run out of ammo and you need to do a charge. Take out the bad guy with a, a nice bayonet. You can still mount that on there. And this is the perfect length for actually mounting uh, a bayonet. Uh, with the M4s, and the front sight base is pushed back further. So it doesn't really match up well. Your barrel's like right here. So if you ever stabbed anything with it, your muzzle would only allow you to poke about three inches. <laughs> with this, this is the uh, appropriate length for stabbing um, an animal or a bad guy or any threat whatsoever. That's what you want right there. Pretty cool, I like that. By the way, it doesn't come with this. I had this already. 
Moving down, if you look here, the pins for the gas block look like they're perfectly aligned. I don't see any marring or scratches on here. Pretty nice. And I've read online that they actually parkerize underneath the front sight base and the, uh, the slots for the pins are also parkerized. So that's nice if that's true. It's got a sling swivel here built in. Hand guards are 12 inch hand guards. So underneath the hand guards, you'll see that it has a single heat shield, which is just enough to get the job done. So here is a look at the barrel without the hand guards on. And this is really interesting. This thing is advertised as a heavy barrel. And take a look at this. This sucker is indeed heavy. I mean, this is thick, crazy thick from, from the chamber all the way to the gas block is all the same diameter and it is crazy crazy thick look at the size of my thumb next to this barrel <laughs> that is just crazy heavy uh, i'm assuming that's a uh, 0.920 like most bull barrels that's what it looks like i don't can't verify that for sure i don't have calipers but it looks crazy thick like a bull barrel and then here is just your standard um, mil spec diameter when you're carrying a 20 inch barreled rifle, um, weight can be a good thing. It actually gives you a solid base, keeps the, the muzzle nice and flat for those uh, follow-up shots, and also absorbs a lot of heat. So when you're shooting this thing and it starts to warm up, you're not gonna get that barrel starting to drift and deviate. It's gonna stay rock solid. So that's actually a nice thing. I like that a lot. The gas block roll pin, Looks like it's good to go. There's no scratches or marring, and it's evenly placed in there. Very nice. The front sight post looks good to go. The rifle length gas tube looks like it's in there nicely. Then here's a close look at your delta ring, which is such a pain in the ass getting the hand guards off. And yes, these hand guards were a pain in the butt to get off, but I got them off. There is your mil spec barrel nut. Nothing fancy there. Nothing to write home about, pretty simple stuff. You could always swap this out to something more high speed, low drag, but I'm gonna keep it um, the way it is for now, for a while. All right, so moving back to the receiver, it's got all your standard fare. You've got your dust cover, the rod and spring, and the C-clip look good to go. Shell deflector, forward assist, your Bear Creek Arsenal roll mark, Sanford, North Carolina, USA, your standard bolt catch and release paddle, your selector lever, safe, and fire. It does have the little humps here, like the old uh, M16s used to have. It says fire and safe right here on the receiver as well. And then the selector lever has a little nub that points to whatever position you have it set to. Safe, fire. This rifle comes with a single stage mil spec trigger bare bones, run of the mill, basic single stage. Make sure it's clear, point in safe direction, weapons on fire. Now watch my finger as I pull to the rear. It was a little bit of sponginess and it hit the wall and then it broke pretty clean. That's definitely serviceable. Let it out to reset. Nice and loud, I felt the reset. Now I'm gonna press again. A little bit of sponginess, then it breaks. Not bad. Again, it's just your basic run-of-the-mill, single-stage, mil-spec trigger. Good enough for home defense and plinking, no problem. You can always upgrade later. A2 style pistol grip with that aggressive slant, which nobody really likes, and that irritating nub that nobody ever really liked. But that's traditional to the old uh, A2, and that's what it has. No storage, no door. It's got your old school carry handle rear sight, which is big, bulky, heavy. I don't like these. I take them off and throw them into a parts bin like everybody else does. But to keep in line with the old classic look, uh, it comes with it. You can always take it off if you want to. You got these big knobs here you can unscrew and take it off. The nice thing about going with these carry handle sights though is that the rear sight is fantastic. I mean, it's got this big, huge knob here with solid detents. You can hear them, clickable detents. That adjusts your windage. That's from left to right. And then you also have this barrel here for adjusting your elevation. 
which a lot of sites nowadays just simply don't have. And then as you can see here, it's got the two different aperture sizes. Uh, the smaller aperture for longer precise shooting and then the larger aperture for low light or close range shooting. One of the things that I don't like about these detachable carry handle sights is that these big knobs tend to vibrate loose over time. So uh, as you can see, they're pretty easy to get off. They're so big that you can get a lot of leverage and take these off. So this is a big hunk of metal that almost no one ever likes to keep on. Replace that with a four power scope or even a red dot if you have to. There is a look at your upper receiver with the Picatinny rail section. Pretty standard fare. All right, I put the carry handle back on just for aesthetics. Um, I guess you could put some Loctite on there if you don't want these things to drift off. The buttstock is just your polymer A2 style solid fixed buttstock. There's no adjustments in here whatsoever. Uh, the nice thing about this is that you can bash some skulls with this if you had to butt stroke somebody. If you ran out of bullets, you got into close quarters. Yeah, that, that's always cool, right? <laughs> um, the downside is there's no, there's no adjustments and it's big, bulky, and heavy. The cool thing though, going with the fixed A2 style buttstock is it has a huge compartment in the back. You just pull this little lever down and open up this hatch and you can actually store stuff in here. So if you're a survival guy, you can put whatever fire starter in there or if you uh, want to put some cleaning gear in there. Um, in the old days in the military, there'd be a cleaning gear set with a cleaning rod and everything in there and a bore brush and all that good stuff with oil. You could store it all in there. So that was actually kind of nice. And then right here you have a sling attachment point as well as a sling swivel in the front for an old school sling. All right, so let's look on the inside. All right, so let's look at the upper receiver first to remove the uh, bolt and bolt carrier. Just pull the charging handle back a few inches and then pull your carrier out like that. And then pull your charging handle back until it reaches that slot and comes right out just like that. All right, so looking inside the chamber here, you'll see something that's a little different than the old uh, A2 style. This actually comes with M4 feed ramps right here and right here. Those are M4 feed ramps, which this is not an M4, but they still put the M4 feed ramps in there for reliability. So in case you wanted to shoot this thing at really high cyclic rates, you know, full auto, bump fire, whatever, binary, uh, you could still get reliable feeding from your magazine. So that's kind of nice. Taking a close inspection of this upper receiver, you'll see that the machining is really, really clean. You know, this is a budget rifle at 594 bucks, and you would think that there'd be some rough edges and swirl marks and things like that. No, this thing is just as clean as my other AR-15s. It costs more. Very nice. Getting a lot of value for a budget price. And something to note, I know this is pretty standard in the AR-15 world, but the upper and the lower receivers are 7075 T6 forged aluminum. This is just your standard mil-spec aluminum charging handle, single-sided. Nothing really to talk about here. The roll pins do look like they're in there properly, though. Gets the job done. I oiled it up, by the way. That's why it's all wet. I put oil on it because my, uh, my BCG gas key is going to ride in here. So you want to keep that oiled for sure. All right, let's take a closer look at the bolt and the BCG or bolt carrier group. And uh, my first impression is this is actually not a bad looking setup here. This is actually kind of nice. Everything is clean. No swirl marks again, no tool marks. The Bear Creek Arsenal website actually says that the bolt is made out of 9310 grade steel. The bolt is laser etched with MPI, which means magnetic particle inspected. And if you don't know what that means, it basically means that they high pressure test this thing and they inspect it for micro cracks. So that's a good thing. It's got the full auto style with the uh, more mass back here. The cut will be matched up with the cut on top, whereas a commercial will go all the way back here. The firing pin is shrouded, which is nice. I like that. The gas key looks like it's staked well. Uh, I've seen deeper stakes in other uh, BCGs, and I've seen almost non-existent stakes on uh, really cheap BCGs that you see at gun shows. So that's good. Uh, it's enough to get the job done for sure. Your firing pin cotter pin comes out just like it normally would. Looks like it's in good condition. It's not cracked. I've seen some that were. 
chrome line firing pin. Looks like it's in good condition. Cam pin, looks like it's in good condition. Again, I oiled this up with some rem oil, so that's why it looks like it's all wet. Bolt looks like it's in good condition. Uh, again, I put oil on the uh, gas rings here. Looks like they got the proper amount of gas rings. Everything looks good. Extractor claw looks good. Your ejector looks like it's good to go. I've actually heard horror stories where some companies forget to put a spring behind the ejector and it doesn't work at all. Good to go. Let's take a look underneath the uh, extractor claw. You'll take your firing pin, push the pin out like that. You should be able to just pull this out with your finger. There you go, just like that. And then your claw comes right out. Hey, look at that. It's got a black O-ring. And that O-ring helps give you more grip strength on that claw as it's trying to grab the uh, case of your brass. That O-ring helps increase the grip strength of that claw right there. So that's pretty good. It's nice that it actually has that. Um, I've seen rifles that don't have the, the black O-ring. All right, so let's take a closer look at the lower receiver upon initial inspection. Everything looks really good. There's no crazy uh, scuff marks or scratches. Sometimes you'll see flaws right here on the front, or oftentimes you'll see flaws right here in the back. It's nice and clean. Magwell looks nice and clean. Very, very nice. The uh, trigger guard is a, another place you'll see flaws. Um, the guys assemble these, thing, these things at the factory sometimes will just go a little nuts on these things and scratch up the uh, receivers right there, but this is nice and clean. The roll pins look like they're pretty even. Very nice. Hammer pin, trigger pin looks good to go. Selector is good to go. The bolt catch and release paddle, good to go. The hammer. Looks like your standard single stage hammer. Protect it as you drop it. If you look inside, the springs look like they're good to go. I put a little dab of oil on the springs just because they are metal that moves back and forth. So it's just nice to have a little lubrication. Not a lot, just a little bit. The sear engages. The disconnector looks good to go. That detent on the uh, selector lever is strong as hell. Um, that may be a pro or a con, depending on what you like. Um, I like the short throw levers myself. A little bit easier to activate when you're ready to fire, but still, again, minor. The plunger for your buffer. Let's take a look at this. Just your standard buffer, not a heavy buffer. Just enough to get the job done, I guess. I don't, this doesn't look like a rifle buffer, actually. We'll see how that works. The spring actually looks really good. Sometimes these springs look really dry. Uh, this one looks like it's actually that, that coated style spring, which is a good thing. It helps keep that, that pogo stick sound down to a minimum. And obviously this is a rifle length spring. It's much bigger than a, a carbine length spring. And then the receiver pins. Looks good. I don't see any cracks or any kind of flaws there either. Very nice. All right guys, so there you have it. That is my initial overview and inspection of the Bear Creek Arsenal BCA-15 Classic. This is a crazy cool rifle. Brings me back to my old days when I was in the military. It's just a really cool rifle. Um, 20 inch barrel, rifle length gas system, solid butt stock. I like this thing. Hit that like button to support my channel. I really appreciate it, helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you just found my channel and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this classic M16A2 clone called the BCA-15 Classic. Stay safe guys.